Hi, I'm Chris Bishop and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge and welcome also to another beautiful day in South Africa. On days like this, it's good just to be alive. Now we're in Rosebank in Johannesburg, a shopping center surely known by all travelers from across Africa. And we're here to meet an entrepreneur called Paul Christie, a man who built a chain of restaurants like this one from scratch. So Paul Christie, uh, great to see you here at uh, Doppio Zero in Rosebank. Um, so just tell me, you know, your background, was, was it an entrepreneur's household that you grew up in? Very much so, Chris. My, um, my family is, they've always been shopkeepers. Uh, we were brought up in a corner cafe in Krugersdorp. Uh, my grandfather had a bakery. Um, my other grandfather had a butchery. So we were exposed to self-employed entrepreneurial spirits from day one. And um, your family, they came here from Cyprus three generations ago, uh, but there's always been this um, work ethic in them. And uh, as you say, standing behind a counter for 40 years. A lot of people don't think about that when they think about entrepreneurs. Uh, I think it's also, it's, it's, a, it's an education level. So, you know, people come here with no skill, and they do what they can. And in South Africa, you've got a lot of Greeks, Portuguese, Italians that uh, were shopkeepers, because that's what they could do. So they did it well. Nobody else wanted to do it because it's hard work. So that's, that's the success. What did it teach you, you think, growing up uh, with two generations before you doing that kind of work? I think uh, mainly it's, it's uh, just work harder, you know, to, to put your head down and, and do what you've got to do to be successful. I, I think what I would teach my kids now is to work smarter. You know, if, if you're in that sort of rut of, of manual labor standing behind a counter, just uh, think about ways that you could empower other people to do the same. Now, I think there, there was a lack of that, that uh, um, I wouldn't call it intelligence, I would call it more trust uh, to leave your business to other people to run. And I think that's part of the success, is running your own business. But uh, definitely just work hard. Now this branch of Doppio Zero here in Rosebank, uh, it um, seems to be quite full, very popular. Just how long has it been running here and how many people do you get coming through here? Well, this, this particular branch has, was moved. We used to be on the other side of Rosebank. Um, it's been open for about six years in this location for two. Uh, we serve up between 20,000 and 24,000 people a month. Uh, and it's our busiest, our busiest Doppio in the group. Um, and it's a very popular space. We've got the open piazza. We've got a beautiful double volume area. We, we've got uh, um, we've got an experienced team. So this is one of our best restaurants. So let's just go uh, a bit back to the beginning now. You went to the University of Cape Town. You uh, you got a BCom there, and as you mentioned before the interview, you also got a degree in vol beach volleyball, <laughs> which is probably uh, not a bad thing either. But. Um, and then when you came out, you were an entrepreneur as well from the, from the beginning and you um, had coffee shops. But uh, W0, when did you get the germ of the idea that created all of this we're in sitting in now? Chris, we, we, were, you know, we found this great location in Greenside and we put an offer in on the site and we, we discovered later that we couldn't put a restaurant. We wanted to open a, a little Italian restaurant. We had to put a, a deli or a bakery uh, because it didn't have the zoning for a restaurant. So we, we put the bakery in um, and we created the Doppio Zero brand around the bakery because Doppio Zero is a, is a grading of flour. So we associated the flour with, uh, with the bakery and it was an immediate success. You know, we had, the, we had a small restaurant with a big outside area. People sat in the sun, they, they enjoyed the sort of cafe style vibe and uh, it, was, it was a great, great vibe. And also, was it not flour that brought you and your business partner together? Yeah, my business partner, Serbian, he had a little bakery and uh, he was selling the croissant at the, at the time. And I was trying to get him to supply me. And uh, I think three attempts later, we eventually got to meet. And we opened up a, a coffee shop before we opened up Zero together. And, you know, we had a very good relationship. Uh, we were totally different people, you know, um, Mickey, my partner, is from Serbia, uh, first generation, first generation here, and uh, we just clicked. We trust each other, and it worked great partnership. 
So the two of you got together in Greenside in Johannesburg. And do you remember that first day when you were sort of opening the doors? Some entrepreneur once told me on this show that it's the most frightening moment of your life because you think, are people going to come in or not? No. What did you think? You know, I was quite excited. Uh, we, Mickey was uh, exiled at the stage. He, he needed to get his visa sorted out, so he was in Serbia. I had my mother, my sister, my grandmother in the kitchen, and I was quite excited. I had a lot of friends coming to the, to the launch, and I wasn't thinking about success or failure. I was just thinking about that night, just getting it right. And from day one, it was a success. So we were lucky, touch wood, it was. And how quickly did it grow from that one store? We, I think the second year, we, still, we opened uh, Bedford View. And uh, within, within two and a half years, we had three restaurants. Um, and then we decided to franchise in our third year. And I think there were quite a lot of challenges that came with that. Um, and we only now, 10 years later, getting to grips with the, with the business model around franchising and around, uh, um, you know, we've, we've got a joint venture partnership with a couple of our, our, our partners. And, uh, you know, we grew quite quickly in the beginning. Um, and now we, we, we're in a position to grow again. So a lot of people watching this will be thinking, well, no, it sounds a bit too easy. You know, the guys opened one thing, it was a success, now they're growing. It must have been your bad days that you had. Uh, you know, in four years, I was in the shop every day. Yeah. So, you know, you, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, you know, you also, when you open a lot of restaurants, there are going to be some, some that don't work as quite as well. Um, fighting with the landlords, uh, getting finance from the banks, staffing issues. So, you know, all in all, it was great fun. You know, we, we have a good time. There, there are definitely ups and downs, but uh, not memorable ones. And uh, also in entrepreneurs speak, you say four years hard work. What hours does that mean uh, for you? Seven days a week, I assume. It, was, it, it started six days a week. Yeah. We were a bakery, so five o'clock in the morning. We used to close at 10 o'clock in the evening. Until? And uh, a year later, we decided to open seven days a week and uh, every day. And then, but well, I had a partner, so we were lucky to share the load. Uh, but when we opened two, three restaurants, it became quite a lot. Every uh, time when you felt like throwing in the towel? Never. 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 It's, not, it's not part of the culture. When did you think as an entrepreneur, when did you think, like, I think I've made it, I've got the edge? I think I've made it. When did you think that? I don't think I, I, I don't think I'm there yet. Eh? <laughs> I don't think I, I, I haven't had that that uh, epiphany. I haven't felt that I that I'm there. So let's just take stock of where you are. So you, how many people have you got working for you now? And how? Well, we've got two brands. So across the group, we're just over a thousand people. Yeah. Um, and rough turnover. Turnovers, we. We'll be close to 200 million a year um, at the end of this year. Which is a lot of cappuccino, huh? So it's a lot of cappuccino. <laughs> you don't realize how many small plates of food you've got to sell to get to that. And now you're looking to spread your wings across the African continent. Um, I understand you're moving into North Africa. Yeah, Chris, we were approached by uh, some business, business guys in Egypt. And uh, we signed a franchise agreement for Egypt. And we're opening our first restaurant in Alexandria in, um, in January, in the middle of January next year. So we're very excited about that. You know, there's been a, a lot of turmoil there now after we signed our agreement. But we're in a shopping center, so it's, it's fairly safe. And uh, we're all going to go to the launch. We're very excited about the, the prospects of getting moving out of South Africa. And where else are you looking at in the continent? Chris, we're not, we're not aggressively looking at, at any other countries. We've registered our brands in a lot of, a lot of countries. I think uh, it very much depends on, on finding the right partners. Um, we don't speak French. Um, we, don't, we don't know the cultures of all the African countries. And I think the success will definitely depend on the right partners in that country. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna open Egypt maybe open a couple of stores there and focus on, on South Africa. We haven't been to Durban yet. We, wanna, we, we might be opening soon and, uh, and other country and other cities. In. How tough is it to find the right partners when you're looking across the continent? It's very tough. You know, we're not, 
exposed to people all the time. So, you know, people approach us often, uh, you have a meeting, and that's your, you have to make a decision. So it's very tough. It's, it's not an easy, uh, you know, in Egypt, we went there, we spent a lot of time with the guys, we realized that they had experience, they showed us what they could do, they came here, so it was a long process before we signed the agreement. And um, so what other countries, I mean, what about something like Mozambique? I mean, is this over the border? There's a lot of people who know your brand there. I'm, I'm quite excited about, about going to those sort of countries that are adjacent to ours. Botswana, we had a, a potential franchisee. Um, we had a site. We just thought it was the wrong time. Um, but Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, you know, th those are countries that we would like to be in, but uh, like I said, we need to find the right people and uh, we'll definitely look at it. So how do you see the brand, your company, your small enterprise from Greenside in like 10 years, 20 years time? Well, I think, you know, we want to try and create a, uh, we want to grow the Doppia brand into a house household name. Um, you know, we, we're looking at, at diversifying our brand in a retail market. Um, the bakeries, we want to ex extend our bakery component and also open up different uh, uh, genres of restaurants under the same brand where, where it, it encompasses what our brand essence is, which is, which is great food. And uh, we've got another brand, Pizza Vino. Uh, we've got uh, seven restaurants at the moment. So we, we'll, we'll grow that brand with the Doppio Zero brand and hopefully and maybe we'll we'll start another brand. So we, we want to create food restaurant brands that um, that just that give a different experience. And yourself, I mean, how do you want people to regard you or remember you as an entrepreneur? I mean, was uh, it a tough one? I think it, it is a tough one. I, I think it's, it's very much, you know, I want to be known as a fair player. Um, what's what's real, very rewarding is empowering people now and growing people and offering people an opportunity to to work you know in this day and age with so much unemployment you know that's that's an exciting prospect for me we employ a thousand people hopefully we're going to get to ten thousand people paul christie the founder of doppio zero thank you very much indeed for your time i'm afraid that's all we got time for on this episode of the entrepreneurial edge from me chris bishop in rosebank it's goodbye.